All right, everyone, welcome back to the land of Kemp. I am your host and the author. My name is Jeffrey Drum. Thank you all so much for joining me again. All right, everyone, welcome back. This is episode 105. And over the past few days, I have produced some absolutely immense breakthroughs in my research on the stone and earth structures of England and Ireland that are directly related to the function of the Egyptian pyramids. Step by step, all of the pieces will start to come together as every part of this system is presented and explained here on the channel. In today's episode, I will be discussing a major component of this bewildering mystery, Silbury Hill, the largest proto-pyramid in Europe, an ancient structure that encodes the tremendous knowledge of the forces of the universe possessed by this ancient civilization, which correspond to the physics and chemistry that would later be embodied by the Egyptian pyramids. If this is the type of content you're interested in regarding the function of the Egyptian pyramids and other ancient structures from across the world, please subscribe to The Land of Chem here on YouTube. Click that little notification bell so that you do not miss the new episodes that premiere twice per week. Like, comment, and stay tuned. If you want to help support this channel, check out the Land of Chem members only section. Link in the video description below for exclusive research related content and unreleased footage that you will not see anywhere else. If you want to pick up a copy of the book or grab some merch, check out thelandofchem.com. If you want to follow me on Instagram, my handle is at thelandofchem. Also, don't forget to check out our new channel here on YouTube, Egypt Eats, also linked in the video description below. Ladies and gentlemen, I think that is it for today's intro. So without further ado, Let's get right to it. All right, everyone, here we go with tonight's episode. And this is Silbury Hill, the largest pyramid mound in all of Europe. And I can tell you from firsthand experience that this thing is absolutely massive. And in this week's upcoming Sunday site visit, you will get to see the approach and our exploration of this structure up close in person. It was mind melting to cross over this hill and see this massive green pyramid looming in the distance. As I mentioned in the previous episodes, the circumference of Silbury Hill, which you can see here, is almost the size of the Great Pyramid on the Giza Plateau. And the function of these two structures are directly connected in relation to the other monuments that surround them on the landscape, with the Great Pyramid using a complex system of internal chambers to produce exothermic chemical reactions, while Silbury Hill is a chemical reactor that utilizes the material composition of the mound itself to achieve the same goal. Now here is a depiction of Silbury Hill from the early 1700s produced by William Stuckley. And you can see here that he is using cubits to measure these structures because he also connects all of these monuments back to their successors in the pyramids of Egypt. And you'll notice here that the top of the mound is completely flat. Another connection to the Great Pyramid of Giza, which I believe never had a capstone and was also intentionally left flat on the top. More of this upcoming in a full expose on the overall operation of the Giza Plateau Pyramid System. But there is a significant amount of groundwork that needs to be laid first, which is why I'm starting with these, ancient proto-pyramid and stone circle structures, as their operation is the foundation of everything that you will see soon in Egypt. All right, now, on to these functional construction materials. And this is an excerpt from EnglishHeritage.org, which is essentially the English counterpart to the Egyptian Ministry of Tourism and Antiquities. And this is the website where you can purchase your tickets to Stonehenge, etc. And there are some extremely significant details about the Proto-Pyramid at Silbury Hill contained within this small section. And I will quote here first, half a million tons of material, mostly chalk, were used to create it. The structure was enlarged over several generations, and huge quantities of chalk dug from the surrounding ditch were utilized to build the mound. Okay, so first, remember that this mound 
is almost completely made from chalk, which I have mentioned previously is a dielectric material with the same chemical composition of limestone, but in a different form. And this chalk is critical in the operation of this mound system. Next, a massive enclosing ditch with an internal bank was then dug 100 meters in diameter. A series of chalk banks were added to the mound, increasing its size and backfilling the ditch. A second enormous water-filled ditch and a rectangular extension were dug beyond it, leaving space for the mound to be further enlarged. Now let me repeat that once again. A second enormous water-filled ditch and a rectangular extension were dug. Water-filled ditch, confirming exactly what I have previously stated, that these stone earthwork enclosure systems, such as those surrounding Stonehenge and Avebury, were filled with water. They are external reservoirs, exactly like what we will see as these structures evolve into the Egyptian pyramids. Now, back to the chalk and another critical functional feature of this ancient landscape, the chalk hills of Wiltshire. An example of which you can see here at Cheryl Hill that features a massive obelisk at the apex. And these chalk hills across Wiltshire in England have all been emblazoned with an esoteric alchemical symbol of the highest importance, the white horse, which you can see here. And yes, these are relatively modern additions, but they are all directly connected to the functional aspects of these landscape features from our ancient prehistoric past. So this entire hillside is almost completely composed of chalk and sitting right on top is a huge obelisk that was erected in the place of an ancient stone pillar that was once the focal point component of another massive earthwork enclosure system, which you can see here. And here is a spectacular aerial photo of Cheryl Hill showing the white horse, the obelisk, and this absolutely huge earthwork enclosure system surrounding this component with the obelisk located at the absolute peak of the monument. And this is an image taken from our hike up to the obelisk of Cheryl Hill, showing the white chalk material that composes this entire hillside. And in episode three on the Members Only channel, I present the full footage from this expedition and reveal the power source for this entire system. And as we were trekking up the hill, both Alexa and I noticed that there appeared to be some terraforming of this chalk hill, including the basin-like areas that you can see down here at the bottom and some interesting ridges going up the side here. And neither one of us were completely convinced that this is a 100% natural hill, as it definitely looks to have some human intervention in its configuration. And the same can be said of all of these chalk hills that are marked with this perplexing white horse alchemical symbol. And here on the left, this is a map showing the location of these seven chalk hills and white horses across Wiltshire, with another one of these structures here on the right, also connected to an immense ancient earthwork enclosure system and some very unusual, perhaps man-made landscape features like these immense scoop-like basins here on the back side of the hill, and also this one in the front. And in our private special permission access to Merlin's Mound, guess what we saw in the distance? This picture was taken from the top of Merlin's Mound, looking in this direction here. And if you zoom in, yet another white horse inscribed upon a chalk hillside. And all of these seemingly innocuous details of the landscape are actually functional components of a more complex ancient system than I could have ever anticipated. And I'll be explaining the meaning 
of this white horse symbol soon, along with my interpretation of the alchemical esoteric poem inscribed in the chapel at the base of Merlin's Mound in a very special upcoming episode. But at this point, I will say that I am completely enthralled by the capabilities of these ancient people and of the immense scope of these systems. It is beyond anything I previously understood. And by immersing myself in attempting to understand how all of this worked, it has led me to a more in-depth understanding of what was happening here in Egypt. And trust me, it will all start to make sense very soon. So now back to Silbury Hill. And you can see here the earthwork enclosure and reservoir system that was filled with water. And there have been some modifications to the infrastructure of this area to accommodate the modern road, which you can see running along the structure right here. But even in recent times, this area here still gets completely flooded during heavy rains, as you will see in the next slide, which is exactly how it would have looked when in operation during the ancient times. Pretty spectacular, right? And there is all of this verbiage used in the ancient mythology surrounding the Egyptian pyramids that describes them as floating islands surrounded by water. Well, this is exactly what they were attempting to describe, a massive, floating pyramid island surrounded by water, i.e. the external reservoir. And there are streams that feed into this area on all sides of Silbury Hill. You can see one running here. And there is another feeder stream coming across the backside of this area that you will see in the footage that we use to cross over as we access the site. And just as I have described with the function of the Egyptian pyramids, Silbury Hill, which you can see here, is located right near the river. So using a simple sluice gate or flow valve system, the flow of the river could have been intentionally diverted into these streams, which flow directly toward the enclosure. As you can see, this one here doing exactly that and used to flood this entire area. And this entire field is filled with channels cut into the ground that were most likely connected to this reservoir flooding stage of the structure's operation. So now we have water utilized as part of the chemical reaction sequence in like manner as their successors in the Egyptian pyramids. So the question remains, what type of chemical reactions did this mound produce without any internal reaction chambers. That will be coming up soon. And here is how this series will work over the next several weeks. First, I will be presenting the structure and the relevant background archeology span and functional details in the regular Thursday research episodes. Second, you will get a chance to visit these sites for yourself during the following Sunday site visit. And then finally, I will reveal a full theory behind the structure's operation and details about the overall function of this entire system. Then we will return to Egypt for an absolutely monumental new series about the pyramids that is directly related to everything that we are discussing now. So stay tuned for the spectacular footage from my expedition to Silbury Hill on this week's Sunday site visit. And subscribe so that you do not miss the upcoming explanations of how all of these ancient mound structure and stone circle systems operated. All right, everyone, just a quick reminder that if you wanna help support the channel, just check out thelandofchem.com. I have the new six degree Green Lion logo, the fifth degree Central Pyramid Hydrochloric Acid logo, the new second edition print copy of the Land of Chem book, this beautiful new Egyptian blue edition, signed copies, extremely rare, only 89 copies in existence of the original first edition, Purple Orchid Paper Print of the Land of Chem book are also available all at thelandofchem.com. So if you want to show some love, just check out the website. And from the bottom of my heart, thank you all so much for the support. All right, everyone, that is it for today's video. This was episode 105, predecessor to the Great Pyramid, Silbury Hill. 
I really hope you enjoyed today's video. And in the next episode of the series, Sunday Site Visit 36, with the spectacular footage from my expedition to Silbury Hill. If you haven't already, please subscribe to The Land of Chem here on YouTube. If you're interested in the function of the Egyptian pyramids and all of these ancient structures from across the world, if you want to help support the channel, check out The Land of Chem members only section for exclusive research related content and unreleased footage that you will not see here on the public channel. Link in the video description below. If you want to grab a copy of the book or pick up some merch, check out thelandofchem.com. If you want to follow me on Instagram, my handle is at thelandofchem. Also, Check out our new channel, Egypt Eats, for food review content from all of the fantastic restaurants that we visited on our expeditions across the world. Ladies and gentlemen, I think that's it for today's episode. So I will see you next time. Yo, are you still watching this? Please subscribe to The Land of Chem here on YouTube and click that little notification button new videos coming out every single week and check out this other episode come on do it do it now